How cool would it be if you can view your NFTs like this in 3D on OpenSea? Well, let me show you how you can do that. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel, aka Hashlips, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be seeing if we can place this 3D model of this beautiful sketchy ape on OpenSea and have it render. Now I've seen these projects around and I want to show you how you can achieve that yourself. Although keep in mind that you need to have at least a base knowledge of what we do with the generative collections. If you don't know these concepts, please go and look at this masterclass, how to create an NFT collection. We will be working with Pinata, which you'll need to know how to work as well as understand what OpenSea needs and marketplaces in order to render your beautiful work. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so where do we start off? Well, you need to actually have a 3D model. So whether you get your 3D model from a place like Sketchfab or, you know, uh, TurboSquid, whatever the place might be, I have Blender open. This is an open source 3D tool and it's pretty powerful. The first thing I want to do is just maybe grab an image of my ape by getting a screenshot and this is purely for the image you can make a beautiful image yourself i'm just going to use this screenshot because i think it will look cool and keep in mind for my 3d model i do have a material on and this is how it looks now what i'm going to do next is i can actually be in, a, in this render view i'm going to select my model itself now keep in mind this animates but i just want this pose over here and I am happy with that so select your model and in your 3d software I just need to bring this down a bit so you can see you click on file then export and you need to export this as a GLB file in the export settings I'm just going to um, simply put this in the desktop but in the settings over here it's important to make sure that you include the selected object otherwise you're going to import a lot of other stuff which is not needed we only need the model not the camera and the lights the transform you can leave this uh, ticked on then for the geometry make sure that you apply the modifiers um, because you want everything to be applied as it's being exported and then in the animation section well in indeed we're not going to include these animation keys so i'm just going to uh, put that off as well now this is my settings that i chose so just opening it so that you can see again and this is fine for my use case i want to rename my model and i'm going to call this one.glb the reason is because with generative programs usually we have one too many and because i'm going to reuse an old contract and just simply point the ipfs to the new contract it's going to try and render the first token but you can call this whatever you need to i'm going to refer to my files as one perfect then i have this 3d folder on my desktop which i have a place for the model and i'm going to export it here so after you've exported that you should have your glb model file okay so now after exporting the model that is in this models file one.glb and it's quite small actually for the image the screen shot that i took of the actual model in blender looks like this and i renamed that to 1.png and then i have an extra folder called metadata with a 1.json file in it we can have a look at how this looks if we open it in visual studio code and here it is it is a normal JSON file that is required by OpenSea to render the correct data. So we've got a name, my 3D sketchy ape. We also have a description and then we have a place for an image and an animation URL. This is the magical property that will make our render work on OpenSea. In order to fill those fields, what we need to do is the usual. We have to upload the data to IPFS and I'm using Pinata. So when you have logged into Pinata, like I said, if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, go and watch the masterclass video. We're going to upload the image folder first. So let's click on upload and select the image folder. 
I'm going to select upload. That is fine. And for now, I'm going to just call this 3D image like so. Then I'm going to say upload and wait for it to be done. Once I have the CID, then I can go ahead and append that to my JSON file. This is our CID link. So what I need to do is copy that, go back to our uh, JSON file and type in the following IPFS and colon forward slash forward slash the URL forward slash one dot PNG. This will be the URL that points to that image right now. The OpenSea network will take this part and replace it with a gateway. That is not the same case for this URL over here. I find it's best if you supply it with a direct link, which I'll show you in a moment. Now let's go ahead and save this file. We can go back to our pinata and let's go ahead and upload the 3D model. So go back, select the models folder and click on upload. This time I'm just going to say this is the 3D model and click on upload. Once this is done, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time we're going to give it the fully qualified URL. How we get that URL? Well, click on this eye icon over here to view the folder's content. Once it loads, it will look like this. Then you need to actually open this file itself. Here, obviously it might say there's too many requests or whatever, um, but the really golden part here is we need to take this fully qualified URL with its gateway and put it into our metadata. So what I'm going to do is place it over there. You can, however, use IPFS colon forward slash like I did here. In my experience, I find it best when I just specify the fully qualified URL. Perfect. Now that our JSON is saved, make sure that you do save the file, we can go ahead and upload this to IPFS. This is our third upload, but the final one. This time we are uploading the metadata that points to our other files. So upload the whole metadata folder and I'm just going to call this my 3D uh, metadata. Now that that's perfect, I'm going to click on upload. And once this is now up, what I can do is point the contract, an existing contract that I already have that I use for testing. And this is exactly the same process whether you replace this in any contract i will show you the process however that's not important but i'm going to do that then go to that collection and view the item okay so i am on the test network of OpenSea, and this is a test collection that i like to play around with and i've got one item in here now this is from a previous test that i've done so I'm going to open it up, go to details, click on the contract address, which will bring up the uh, Rinkeby test um, ether scan, which we can then go and change something in the contract. In my case, what I would like to do is write to the contract, connecting my MetaMask, going down here to the bottom where it says set URI prefix. I want to go back to Pinata and copy my metadata CID. Uh, once that is copied, and I'm sure I have the right one, I'm going to go to the contract and then swap it out so that my contract can read the correct uh, metadata that I want to test out. So I'm going to write IPFS uh, colon forward slash, paste that with a trailing forward slash. It's important to note that the contract automatically appends a one dot JSON. So I do not have to specify that. I'm going to write this to my contract. And then once the transaction is successful, we are going to refresh it on the OpenSea network over here. And we should see a change and hopefully a 3D model in OpenSea. If you are swapping out metadata like I have, it's important to click on refresh metadata over here so that the OpenSea website knows to go and refresh and refetch your data. Now, here we go. As you can see, we've got our new image as our NFT. This is the screenshot that I took, and this looks pretty cool. Now, if we click on our NFT, guess what? Here is our beautiful 3D model, and we can click and drag it around. You can also see it. It pops up a viewer for you to go and zoom in. 
check your 3D app out. It's pretty amazing. Now, I have to admit, I did this before, and uh, as you can remember, my character had a different pose. And the reason why it's different now is because I went back into the file and scaled up my character because when I tried this out previously, my character was so small, I couldn't see it. So I just used another file quickly and scaled it up a bit bigger. And uh, now it's quite big enough uh, to be visible. However, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial with me. If you did, please give me a like, subscribe and comment below on what you would like to see me do next. I hope you have an amazing day. Until next time, cheers for now.